today, and we'll be back at 6. Have a night. On World News Tonight this Wednesday, the Republicans say let's cooperate as a victorious president returns to Washington. I begin this new uh, tenure with high optimism and with renewed energy. The new administration is going to have a new look. The president's cabinet gets shaken up. And on Solutions Tonight, children out of control. A remarkable way to change their behavior. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight in Washington, where the Clinton administration is beginning to rearrange itself for the final term, which means try to figure out just how much of a problem the Congress that is still controlled by Republicans will be, and bringing in some new personalities to the president's cabinet for a new look and a fresh start. ABC's Britt Hume reports from the White House tonight. Mr. President, and I do mean Mr. President. <laughs> Chief of Staff Leon Panetta is among those who've let it be known they'll soon be leaving. But for today, Panetta was playing master of ceremonies at a South Lawn ceremony for the victorious Clintons and Gores, attended by cabinet staff and families. The president roundly thanked everybody, noting that two years ago, few would have predicted this outcome. But I believe if we just kept doing the right things, kept trying to do them in the right way, and kept working hard, and refuse to be distracted by the things which dominate too much of our public life today. In the end, the American people would render the right judgment. Aides say the president has yet to concentrate on the new cabinet and staff appointments he will need to make, but they seem certain to include, in addition to Panetta, replacements for Secretary of State Warren Christopher, Secretary of Defense William Perry, Secretary of Commerce Mickey Cantor, and Secretary of Energy Hazel O'Leary. O'Leary has been under fire for expensive foreign travel. I've had discussions uh, with Leon Panetta. I have not yet talked uh, to the president about my, you know, my plans. But I have been clear from, with all of my colleagues from the very beginning that I was uh, a four-year secretary of energy. On Air Force One, coming back from Little Rock today, the president said neither Cantor nor Perry had told him finally that they are leaving. I have not had conversations with uh, either one of them about that. I have talked to Mickey Cantor. But we haven't uh, reached the final decision. Uh, they haven't, I don't believe. They haven't talked to me about it. Major staff and cabinet turnover is customary at the start of a new presidential term. And the four names that surface today are likely to be just the beginning. Peter? Well, Brad, of all these uh, on his desk, which one do you think is priority? Well, priority now, Peter, is chief of staff. Uh, there is some sensitivity here uh, about the Zoe Baird and Kimba Wood nominations, we recall, that came a cropper for attorney general at the start of his term. No one wants a repeat of that. They want a strong new hand in place before the process of appointing the new cabinet really begins. Okay, Brie Hume of the White House tonight, and of course, Leon Panetta rumored to want to go back to California and perhaps ultimately run for governor there. The imminent resignation of two particularly prominent members of uh, Mr. Clinton's cab that mentioned by Britt will leave a void in his administration. Our national security correspondent John McQuethy tonight reports on the secretaries of state and defense and also on their possible successors. And gentlemen. Warren Christopher told Bill Clinton yesterday in Little Rock and Defense Secretary Perry announced to his senior staff this morning that he would be leaving as well. For both Christopher and Perry, the march of time appears to be a major factor in their decisions. Both men celebrated birthdays last month. Christopher is 71 and Perry 69, and both have maintained a brutal pace for years. The president is being encouraged to fill at least one of the jobs with a Republican. On a short list for either state or defense are Senator Richard Lugar, retiring Senator William Cohen, and above everyone else, Colin Powell, if he were only interested. Among Democrats, Sam Nunn, who is also leaving the Senate, is a possibility for either job. Sources say former Senate Majority Leader George Mitchell is also being considered for Secretary of State, along with U.N. Ambassador Madeleine Albright, if named she would be the first woman ever to hold the job. John McQuethy, ABC News, the Pentagon. In terms of the popular vote, by the way, Mr. Clinton did not get the 50% he wanted, even though he is sure to claim a mandate anyway. Mr. Clinton got 49%, Mr. Dole got 41%, and Ross Perot got 8 You may have heard Mr. Dole say last night that today, or this morning precisely, would be the first morning in 45 years 
that he would get up with nothing to do. His home is really Washington. He got up in Washington with nothing to do. We're joined by ABC's Jim Wooten, who has covered Senator Dole from the beginning. So what about the inner man today? Any clues at all, Britt? Well, he uh, found uh, something to do, as a matter of fact, which we all expected him to do. Uh, in the late morning, he uh, left his apartment at the Watergate and was driven across town to his campaign headquarters, uh, where he did practically nothing. There was a staff meeting that he did not attend. A lot of Secret Service agents came by and uh, for photographs of people who'd been on his detail for the last few months. And in the mid-afternoon, or late afternoon, he left. He's expected back here tomorrow for a, uh, another photograph session with staff members. And then probably at some time tomorrow or the next day, he'll be off to Florida, which is what everybody expected. No press conference, no statements of any kind, no hint of what he plans to do with his future. Okay, okay. Jim Wooten, Britt was the first one. Many thanks indeed. It was a long night last night. When we come back, we'll have the rest of the news, the new Congress. Expect action on some tough issues and some tough action on the president. The scandal at Boston College, 13 football players suspended for gambling. And on solutions tonight, screaming, violent, out-of-control children. We have a solution for some parents. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by Nicorette. I'm not everyone. I'm me. So when I decided to quit smoking, I did not choose that one-size-fits-all patch. I chose Nicorette gum. Nicorette has this flexible dosing schedule that helped me control my cravings. It let me use the strength I needed, the amount I needed when I needed it. Nicorette was personal. It fit me. You know, me the non-smoker. Me. Commit to quit for the great American smokeout on November 21st. You can do it. Nicorette can help. Oh, honey, you're so young. I could never keep up with you. But mom says that's why you can that. Insure is number one doctor recommended. Complete balanced nutrition to help you stay healthy, active, energetic. Drink it as a meal or a snack. I'm sure you'll marry someone even more fun than me. Well, will you at least come to the wedding? Sure. I'll be there. Insure, number one doctor recommended. Drink to your health. The broad makeup of the new Congress is clear tonight, though several blanks are still to be filled in. In the Senate, one contest in Oregon is still too close to call, but the new Senate will have at least 54 Republicans, 45 Democrats, and that is a net gain of one, possibly two, when Oregon is settled for the Republicans. The Republicans actually lost ground in the House of Representatives, but how much remains to be seen in the new House, there will be at least 224 Republicans, 204 Democrats, six contests are undecided. This, of course, means the Republicans will still be in charge of Congress, but by a smaller margin, which may in part account for their rather subdued tone today. Cooperation was the theme. Here's ABC's John Cochran. Having won back-to-back -back majorities in the House for the first time in 68 years, Republicans say their goal now is to maintain control into the next century. <gasps> but they look to the past for their symbol of victory. This car was uh, built the last time the Republicans won a re-elected majority in the House, and we thought it would illustrate that uh, it's been a few years. Majority leader Dick Armey often tangled with President Clinton during the last Congress, but now he promises to cooperate on tough issues like saving own. Medicare from bankruptcy. We ought to come to the point where we can put politics aside and get down to the serious policy work. There should be no reason why that can't happen. This is pretty amazing. He was talking about the Republican victory, and it is pretty amazing that even though Democratic ads have made Gingrich the nation's most unpopular politician, he will continue as speaker. But Democrats will also continue to press ethics charges against him, including the most serious one, that he may have withheld information from the committee investigating him. Over in the Senate, Majority Leader Trent Lott said Republicans will be investigating Democrats, too, especially campaign contributions from foreigners. I think we should... Uh talk about having some early hearings on what happened in this campaign, the abuses, the corruption, the problems. Can we improve it? But both parties know the public has a limited appetite for partisan head bashing. And today, Senate Republicans said they had no plans to resume investigations of the Whitewater affair. John Cochran, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Well, no one knows the Congress quite as well as our Cookie Roberts, and she joins us this evening. We're going to put her... Uh 
out on a ledge just a little bit, Koki. <laughs> I am out on a ledge. <laughs> <laughs> unusually ask you for a prediction. Cooperation, the theme today, how long will it last or will it get mean and if so, how mean? Well, I think it gets mean for a, a couple of reasons. The, the people who are here already understand that the voters do want cooperation. That's what this divided election result really was about. And the voters told us that in the exit polls in a variety of ways. And they told the Congress that when the congressional approval rating shot way up when Congress did cooperate on welfare and immigration and minimum wage and the rest. The problem is there's some new people coming who are very partisan and polarized. And they're people who have suffered through some very rough elections who are not going to get over their bruises easily and will want to get back. And so I think that you will see a lot of animosity and you've got these teeny tiny margins you were talking about, Peter, those tiny margins in both the House and the Senate, hard to cooperate when you have those kinds of tiny margins. Do you mean to tell us we may be looking at gridlock again? We could be looking at gridlock, which clearly the public doesn't wa want. Worse than that, we could be looking at such nasty investigations that you have paralysis. Okay, Koki Robertson, Capitol Hill, thank you for tonight and for last night. Um, setting this record, record straight today, by the way, last night several news organizations, including ours, made an early call on the New Hampshire Senate race, saying that incumbent Republican Bob Smith had lost. Then for a long time it was too close to call. Finally, we all turned out to be wrong. Senator Smith won, and today he had a well-deserved joke at our expense. If I could quote Mark Twain, rumors of my death are greatly exaggerated. And they were. Perhaps not greatly exaggerated, but certainly early. We were wrong. There were more than candidates on the ballots yesterday. In 24 states, citizens gathered enough signatures to place a record 90 initiatives on the ballot. Highlights from a couple. With Proposition 209, Californians who have a history of upsetting the status quo did it again by voting to put an end to affirmative action programs in state jobs, contracting, and college admissions. Court challenges have already begun. We are confident that Proposition 209 will not see the light of day. And California also voted to allow the very sick to use marijuana as a pain reliever on doctor's orders. Possession remains a crime under federal law. Arizona went even further, allowing heroin, LSD, and cocaine as well as marijuana to be used medicinally. The governor says this sends the wrong message to young people and he may veto the initiative. In Colorado, voters rejected a constitutional amendment which would have given parents the right to raise and to discipline their children as they see fit. There were concerns about child abuse. And finally, just one word about turnout yesterday. It was terrible. Only 48% of the eligible voters went to the polls yesterday. That is the lowest number since 1924. And if you do not think that turnout counts, Ask Congressman John Fox of Montgomery County near Philadelphia. A quarter of a million votes were cast in his district yesterday, and he won by 10. Why the Boston College football team is knee-deep in trouble, and we do not mean their record. If you're traveling on business, the Quality Executive Room is a great place to follow the campaign. Free local calls so you can get the real scoop on all the races. In-room coffee to get you through those speeches. And a big desk with a computer data port so you can track the polls. Or ignore the polls and play Galaxy Gangster. Gotcha! Everything you want. Satisfaction guaranteed. Quality ends and suites. We're good for business. Gets my vote. This is no ordinary toothbrush. This is a Braun Oral-B plaque remover. The new Braun Oral-B Ultra. Its ultra-speed oscillating brushing action removes plaque better than an ordinary toothbrush. That's not our opinion. That's clinical fact. And its unique cup-shaped brush head cleans even below the gum line. Dentists recommend changing your toothbrush every three months. We suggest you change it forever. With the Braun Oral-B Ultra. First came Tagamet, then Zantac, then Pepsid, but the newest, Axid. Now in non-prescription strength as new Axid AR, a medicine so effective for many, Axid AR can prevent heartburn completely. New Axid AR. It moves with grace, effortless. It is the American-built flagship of Toyota. spacious interior and all the 
loveliness of an endless horizon. Avalon, experience the tranquility. Cappuccino from Maxwell House. He's the most feared man in the music business. I would never get on a witness stand and go against that guy. Artists and executives say he coerced them out of millions, but he says no way. Brian Ross gets the answers. A primetime exclusive tonight on ABC. A big scandal in college sports grew a bit today. Boston College has suspended 13 football players. The charges are gambling. Here's ABC's James Walker. According to the local district attorney, two Boston College players bet against their team in this October 26 game against Syracuse, which BC lost 45-17. But their bets apparently had no effect on the outcome. We have found absolutely no evidence, no indication of any game, the outcome of any game, the score of any game being compromised. The rumors about possible point shaving by team members intensified last week after BC, favored by 11 points, lost to Pittsburgh 20 to 13. I will not, and the team will not, accept back to this program anybody that has bet against Boston College. 11 other players allegedly place bets not against their own team, but on other college and professional games. All 13 players were suspended from the team today. NCAA rules forbid athletes from betting on any sporting event. James Walker, ABC News. In Southern California today, an example of why greed does not pay. A man led police on an hour-long chase after robbing a bank. He fled on foot when his car blew a tire. And if he hadn't stopped to pick up or try to pick up all of that money, he might just have got away. The oil company Texaco said today it is going to suspend two employees and suspend the benefits of two retirees. Two years ago, those executives discussed destroying company documents about a racial discrimination suit and made racial slurs which were recorded. On Nightline tonight, you can hear those recordings. On Wall Street today, investors were said to be pleased that the Republicans held on to Congress, pleased enough to send the Dow Jones Industrials up 96 points to a record close of 61.77. On the Nasdaq market, stocks gained about 16 points. Overseas now. In Africa today, the government of Zaire has told international relief organizations they are not welcome in Zaire. The United Nations says that will mean a humanitarian nightmare for more than a million refugees from Rwanda who are scattered in eastern Zaire. Until the latest fighting began, the center of a massive foreign aid effort was in the Zaire town of Goma. ABC's Sheila McVicker is there. In Goma, people fight for virtually nothing. What little food there is was left behind by aid agencies. There was a struggle for the smallest carton of biscuits. Less than a week ago, these people lived in a town that worked, that had running water, electricity, shops. Now everything has been looted, many have died, and everyone you speak to is hungry. I have just this for my whole family, he says. There is nothing left at home. And yet in the complicated and tragic story of this region, these people are the lucky ones. They are the longtime residents of Goma, and they have homes. 800,000 Rwandan refugees have fled after fighting between the Zairean army and rebel soldiers. Up this road about seven miles is where the refugees are concentrated. They're between the rebels and the retreating Zairean army. And this is about as far up the road as it's safe to go. International aid workers have been barred from reaching the refugees. We should be very concerned that we have no access to them. Nobody can see them. We, we lost their track. They are, they are a lost population. A population the international community cared for for more than two years. Now, aid officials say that the only answer may be to convince the refugees that it is time to return to Rwanda, the country they fled in the first place. Sheila McVicker, ABC News, Goma Zaire. One other overseas item in Moscow today, the impatient patient. It's only the day after his heart surgery, and yet Russian President Boris Yeltsin has been pestering his doctors to leave the hospital. Today, the man who just got off the ventilator took back his presidential powers. When we come back, a solution for parents who cannot control disruptive children.
Mortgage payments, college tuition, career choices. People can get so lost in their day-to-day -day concerns that they simply avoid planning for their retirement. Unfortunately, that's life. New York Life has all kinds of life insurance policies to help make sure you enjoy your retirement. We can even help you catch up if you started planning late. That's New York Life, the company you keep. Trusting the wrong diarrhea medicine uh -oh. can put you in a very uncomfortable position. But you can count on Imodium AD to stop diarrhea, often in one dose. Sorry. Take Imodium AD, one dose relief you can count on. Hyperkeratosis? Symptom. Persistent, itchy, flaky scalp. Solution. Neutrogena T-Gel. It works. Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo. Recommended number one by dermatologists. Hey, looks like you're eating potato soup, too. Actually, it's potato with roasted garlic. Roasted garlic? Looks better than mine. Warm up to a new taste. Campbell's home cooking new potato with roasted garlic soup. Are those chives? Uh-huh. Flavorful potatoes, select herbs and spices, blend to create a taste you only get from home cooking. Like a taste? Sure. Honey, could you get me a bowl of home cooking for our neighbor? Campbell's home cooking. Great taste never looked better. Feeling safe, being secure. It's why more families rely on Buick LeSabre than any other full-size sedan. Peace of mind from LeSabre. World News Tonight with Peter Jennings continues. Now, Solutions. Face it, those of us who have children have all had those moments when we want to throttle the little monsters, though it usually only takes a smile to remind us how wonderful they really are. However, what about the children who are out of control all the time? The child who's been kicked out of daycare for attacking other children, as an example, or the child who throws tantrums morning, noon, and night. Those are the truly difficult ones we look at tonight. ABC's Beth Nissen has found a solution which might be emulated. She's in Tennessee. It was more than a case of the terrible twos. Laurel Marchesoni would be like this most every day, all day. Her exasperated parents tried scolding her, giving her a time out in her room, even spanking. Nothing worked. It finally got to the point where Joe and I did not know what to do. We had no control of our lives whatsoever. If we're going to go over Mary's program. Their pediatrician referred them here to the regional intervention program. Sometimes when you body block her, she will bite you. Since 1969, this program has been offering a solution to parents with out of control children. A fundamental assumption in our program is that children need, desire, hunger after attention. Even negative attention. Law, well, do not touch Sam. How does that work? because the child recognizes that that behavior is producing attention. The program helps children break a lifetime of bad behaviors. Let's see, she took the toy away without really saying anything. By teaching their parents to rethink all they ever knew about parenting. And that's a lot of what the program is, is teaching the parents how to act and how to respond to the kids. From the first session, parents learn and practice the program's basic formula. Ignore bad behavior unless it is dangerous. As often as possible, catch children being good and repeatedly praise them for it. Watch what happens when Jeremy lashes out at a playmate. The adults in the room deliberately focus only on the pushed child. Jeremy is ignored. But when Jeremy plays well, he is encouraged. Good sharing, Jeremy. That's a great job. Most behavior that receives reward is behavior that is going to continue. Changing behavior is neither easy nor quick. Most families need 20 visits over three months. Average cost, $3,000 per family. Public health grants pay for the program. Families pay with their time. You're playing so nicely, Jordan. 
parents work training new parents. He's still testing you. One week for every week their own child was in the program. The benefits are lasting. You guys are being great listeners. I really like that. A long-term study of program graduates found no signs of disruptive behavior nine years later. Oh, good throw, Laura! The Marchesonis completed the program one year ago. Is she a happier little girl? There's no comparison. We were out of control. Well, I can do it. And now she knows the limits and she knows the consequences. It wasn't only a solution, it was a godsend. Literally a godsend. There you go. There you go. I knew you could. Beth Nissen, ABC News, Nashville. We'll have another solution tomorrow. And we'll be right back after this. Steve Young here. You know, crispy Wheaties and Raisins has plump raisins, sweet flakes, and an incredible crunch. I love the crunch! Good crunch. Bad aim. Come crunch time, there's only one. Crispy Wheaties and Raisins. in your life to talk to your doctor about Zocor? Call 1-800-MERC-75 for your free Zocor guide to healthy living. Zocor, be there. I got a lot accomplished this week. Thanks to Jimmy's versatility. Let's see. Hauled the love seat in for reupholstering on Monday. Thanks to Jimmy's cargo space. Took the kids to soccer practice Wednesday. With its spacious interior and luxury ride, bought groceries you can do a lot in a jimmy and now a weekend getaway jimmy by gmc it puts you comfortably in command what laxative do i use to relieve constipation to get back to normal i get back to nature with nature's remedy the laxative with gentle all natural active ingredients that work overnight for constipation try nature's gentle laxative nature's remedy just before we leave this evening, we'll review our top story. A triumphant President Clinton returned to the White House today. Not much time for celebrating because at least four members of his cabinet intend to resign. And Mr. Clinton will have to now turn his attention to their replacements, in fact, almost immediately. A very different day for Bob Dole in Washington. He made a few phone calls, talked to aides at his campaign headquarters, but said nothing about his plans for the future other than a bit of rest and recreation in Florida. That is our report on World News Tonight. Later this evening on Prime Time, school systems and their money. How waste and inefficiency can really shortchange your children. I'm Peter Jennings. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow, I hope. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. Tonight, ABC just got wilder. Well, when you heard all the gossip about me coming out, this is what we meant. Starting with an all-new episode of Ellen. Not so bad, isn't it? Followed by a bonus episode of...